Hi everyone, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kid. This is a very, very exciting video which is actually going to be premiered, I believe this is part one, um, on the 30th of July and this is part of the Julius Spiri July Colour Film which is hosted by Shell Arty, um, also um, known as Michelle, and Ashley Colours on YouTube. And the hashtag for this colorathon is Julia in July 2021. So as well as the streamathon that's going on, you can also participate by colouring any Julia Spiri pictures. So it's very, very exciting. And um, this is the picture that I have picked for this. And you may not be able to tell, but I have started by just doing a pastel base because I wanted to do that before I started the video just so that it was um, out of the way and it is quite messy as well so I wanted um, that to be done. So um, unfortunately I'm not able to stream on the slots that I have but um, Michelle has very generously given me two slots so that I can do two parts to this video and do premiered videos instead so I'm hoping that I'll be able to be in the chats um, of these videos um, and I've never premiered videos before so I'll see how it goes and if you like that feature maybe I can do it more often. And also, I do want to mention straight away that there is also a giveaway, which is extremely generous of um, Julia and also Michelle for purchasing um, all of the pages for the giveaway. So I'm going to insert now the page that you are able to um, enter the giveaway for. So um, it's a beautiful page and um, I can't wait to see who wins and simply all you need to do to enter the giveaway is to comment down below um, saying that you would like to enter so after this video is finished um, I'm not, I don't think you can comment during the video I'm not sure but anyway if you comment down below and then I will pick um, a winner at random by giving each of the comments a number um, and yeah I thought that was just the easiest way to do it because there would be no um, time in one of my videos to do a live giveaway in the chat so I thought it would just be easier to do the giveaway after the actual videos um, and you can comment on either this video or the part two which is um, also going to be over this weekend so um, I'm really excited to um, continue with this page so I have printed this on um, De La Roni, I believe. Yeah, uh, smooth heavyweight paper. It's an off-white paper. And I've just started by using my Rembrandt pastels, which I love. And whilst I'm chatting, I will be answering some questions that I've had. So I did put up some posts on Instagram. And so basically what I'm going to be doing is answering the questions. So I've had a few uh, on YouTube, most of them have been on Instagram, so I will just get started. Um, with this part of the, this part one, um, it's very hot outside, so I might not do this in one continuous, um, one continuous clip, it may be over uh, several days and then put together, but that's just purely because it is very hard to um, sit down for a long period of time. Um, it's very warm here. I'm filming this on Sunday the 18th of July, so a bit earlier because we are going on holiday whilst this streamathon is happening. So yeah, unfortunately I can't do a live stream. So what I'm planning on doing for this is actually using um, a marker base for most of it and then I'll go over with pencil. So I have a few markers selected and these are the Touch Cool markers. They have a fine tip um, and also a broad tip. Um, some of these are running out. I've had them for quite a while now. So um, yeah, unfortunately they're not all um, juicy. But um, obviously I'm glad that I've been using them. That's good. Um, sorry for the light there. That's just because of the window. I've got it open. Um, and I am going to be using this colour palette as inspiration. So this is from my... Uh, practical colour combinations book which I really love I've used this many times before for colour combinations and um, basically let me just try and close that for you there we go um, basically I'm going to be using this as inspiration and seeing what I can come up with obviously I'll mix it up a little bit um, I never rigidly stick to 
the colour palette so we'll see what happens so I'm going to do a marker base as I said probably for these um, flowers first the houses I'm thinking of peachy pink sort of colours to kind of go along with what we've got for the background so I've picked out a few colours let me just show you what they look like so with this being a more chatty video um i will kind of explain what i'm doing but also answer your questions because i thought if i'm going to need to fill um a longer amount of time it'd be good to have something planned um and my parts will probably be roughly around an hour or so so they won't fill the full two hours because there's no way my phone could um fill that amount of time and also I don't know if I could talk for two hours I mean it's different on a live stream because you're you know interacting with people and I know obviously I'll be interacting with you on the chats if I can hopefully make it um but yeah it is a little different so they are the colors that I've picked out and if I just show you the swatch of these um markers as well these are um the markers in the set and I Overall, I really love the set. I think it's got a good variety of colours. Looking at it, I might actually pick a couple more colours out. I'm thinking one of these beige colours just to give a bit of difference. Although, that wouldn't really be a flower colour, I guess, would it? So, I might just stick with what I've got, actually. But maybe just add a purple in. So, I think I'll add either 77 or 75 that's the only thing with this set lots of the colors are very very similar to each other so yeah that's really the the only thing that i'd say is bad about this set you can see they're very similar these peachy ones even these beige colors are very similar um so yeah if it had a bit more variety i'd say definitely go for it um but yeah i'll pick one of the purples out and then we will get started Okay, so now that I've picked out the lilac colour to add to my other colours, um, I am going to start with um, answering the questions whilst I put a base down. So it's nice with marker because it's just really simple to put down. I don't have to think too much whilst I'm answering the questions for you. So uh, yeah, I'm going to start up here, do the swan purple. Um, and yeah, so I've had a few on YouTube. Um, the first one from Shannon Rankin is, what was the first adult colouring book you got? And this is quite a popular question, actually. So I'm not sure how much I've said it because I haven't done an updated colouring book collection video, I, I don't think, since I started my channel. Oh, and um, sorry if you can hear the noise, that's just because the window is open. As I said, it was really hot. Um, but... I will do one of those by the way soon I promise um but the first book I ever got was Animal Kingdom by Minnie Marotta closely followed by Secret Garden by Joanna Rasford so I'm pretty sure I got Minnie Marotta's books at least the first couple I know just just Animal Kingdom I think uh when we were still living um in the north so that must have been maybe 2012. I don't actually know when that book came out. I'm not sure, so um, I could totally be wrong. But I vividly remember getting Secret Garden in 2014 um, at Christmas. And the reason I remember is because I took it with me on holiday whilst we went to South Africa. And that was the craziest but the most amazing Christmas ever because we left for South Africa on Boxing Day. So our Christmas really was quite quick because we had to leave, um, you know, straight after. So um, it was such a wonderful experience. And I remember taking that book with me and colouring in it on the plane. I had my 24 set of Faber Castell classics I think at that time and yeah just um would colour in that so they were the first couple of books I got but I kind of regard, regard them as kind of getting them at the same time so that was when I was still younger my first book that I got um 
that really got me into the adult colouring craze was Romantic Country, the second tale, because it was at the same time when I got my Prismal colours. Um, and CDG1786 on um, YouTube said, do you ever get scared of colouring a certain page? And how do you get yourself to colour it anyway? What are the things that you say or think to yourself to give you that courage to start on it? So this is a question that I... Um, would often wonder as well and I still do there are still times where I have pages that I just don't either that I don't feel motivated to colour um or that I don't know how to colour because it's really detailed or you know scary so I completely get where you're coming from here with this question uh, I'll answer it kind of bit by bit so I do get scared of colouring certain pages definitely for a while Thomas Love Tomics book um really did intimidate me because they're so detailed i then have books that i love so much that i'm nervous about coloring in them so that was definitely the case when i got ivy and the inky butterfly uh, for the second time so it did sit there for a little while i was like oh i really want to start it again but it did make me a little bit nervous to start it again because I love it so much and I'm trying to think I think there are just other books as well I think in a good way the mythographic books kind of scared me because I knew that they'd be challenging some of Kirby's books definitely do actually me and my friend Valentina who's at Universe Art on YouTube and Instagram we're actually talking about this we've got a buddy colour in um, Fragile World and we're doing the Galapagos Penguin double spread and double spreads definitely scare me I'd say I don't think I've done a double spread yet this year which just shows how much I um, don't really colour them I think that's partly because of lack of time but also it is just because they intimidate me quite a lot so yes I do get scared of pages um, but how do I get myself to colour them anyway um, I would say that I only colour them when I feel like it. I don't force myself to colour them, but I sometimes think it's easier to just start the page because what then does um, happen is it bugs me if I have a whip, so I do try to complete it. See, that's not the case with all of them. Um, I mean, another book that also intimidates me is the um, Thomas Kincaid colouring books. That's been a whip for the longest time, the one that I've got at the moment, but in a good way, it's always in the back of my mind that I've got that whip and it makes it so much easier to continue in that book when I know I've really got a page started because it's like, oh, well, I don't have a blank page waiting to be coloured. I have a I have a work in progress. I have something to continue with. Um, so that definitely makes it a lot easier um, and less daunting. But if it's a book that I'm intimidated by um, and I haven't started colouring in yet, usually I just... I like looking through the pages sometimes, just looking at the um, art and when I feel inspired I just start. I think it's honestly the easiest thing to do and I know it may be quite obvious but um, yeah it really really does help. I'm just thinking what I want to do with these ones. Um, yeah I think I'll go with the peach and then another purple one down here and a pink one there I think that's what I'll do um and so what are the things that you say or think to yourself to give you that courage so yeah kind of similar to what I was saying actually I've kind of um answered that one I I'm that sort of person that I try to color in as um as much as I can and make sure that I'm coloring in most of my books obviously we can't get around to all of them and there are those books that I'm really um, you know, upset that I haven't got around to it yet. Some gorgeous books um, that I need to start on. But I think I just, if it's a detailed page that's intimidating me, I just start on one tiny section. So instead of doing what I'm doing now and basing the entire thing um, at once, I just start on one thing. So when I did the double page spread in Fairy Celebrations, the Halloween party one, that is a very detailed page, but I enjoyed every second of it. And 
I just started on the cat. Um, I just coloured one, coloured the other, and that was me started. And just starting on one thing and just focusing on one element of the page at a time can really help. I think I then moved on to the background, which was a more difficult task, definitely. But it was really, really good to just start the page and get stuck into it. So I um, hope that helps. I mean, it's. I think that's the trickiest thing with colouring, really, knowing what to colour when we have all this choice. I mean, we always have that thing, I think, when we're really young you know when you're a toddler and you just pick up anything and color with it but now that adult coloring has evolved it's very different for us I think now and we I think it's great because we always want to learn and we always want to um you know motivate ourselves to do things that may be a little bit out of our comfort zone and a bit um nerve-wracking so this question is from Barbara Corley and she said hi i'm new to coloring and was wondering you talk about different pencils how do you decide what pencil to use and when do i really need all of the different types of pencils right now i only have prismas do i need polychromos or watercolor pencils thanks so um i did kind of give her a brief explanation when she uh commented on um one of my videos i think and i asked if i could save it for this video because it's it's one of those things that you can get quite in depth about um, and I think is one of the main things when you're beginning to colour. So I said to non a uh, long story short, no, you don't need all of the pencils. Um, obviously, as we um, as we know, um, we like to collect new things, try new things out, and it's it's only natural with a with a hobby like this that you want to do that and see what works best for you but when I started out I only had prismas and then tried out a few polys and happened to really like those as well so I started building up my collection and then as I found new pencils and saw what other people were using I wanted to try those as well so if you are just a beginner I don't think there's really any point going out and buying all the different types of pencils um, if you do want that experience of uh, oil versus wax um, then I'd say if you're looking and uh, to get some more high-end pencils then yeah great try out some prismas maybe try out some polys as well and see what you think and what you prefer um, all pencils do have a mix of wax and oil but um, they have just heavier percentages, um, I think. So see what you like. Personally, for me, I'd say really good in-between pencils, which are on the more budget side, are Black Widow pencils. I absolutely love them. And since the Monarch sets come out, I've loved them even more because there have definitely been some colours that I felt were missing before that set came along. So that's a really good in-between set they're quite waxy but they're also a harder core and um yeah they're just great for um kind of my my style of coloring because sometimes i like to layer and sometimes i don't and they're good for both things so you don't need all of them but that obviously is also the question of do you want budget pencils or do you want the more higher end because there are many in each category um, but I definitely say if you're unsure then open stock is probably the best way to go just to try out a few um, and yeah see what you think uh, by the way I'm not I I don't really use markers that much so um, I do end up with streaking quite a bit but I don't mind because I go over with pencil but yeah just to let you know this probably isn't the the best uh, technique for basing but that's because I tend to not use them uh, that much but I thought I would try this medium because you know especially on a video um, and yeah try it out so um but as Barbara has asked obviously if you want to branch out and try different mediums like your watercolor pencils by all means go for it because 
you will find what works for you. Um, personally, I don't really use um, many watercolour products on my books just because the process for me of colouring, I prefer using colour pencil. That's my go-to medium. And as you can see now, I'm getting out of my comfort zone by using my markers. But yeah, it's really up to you what you um, what you go for. Um, watercolour pencils, I'd probably maybe start out with some budget ones because um, the good thing about them is that actually with them being a bit cheaper, the colours are still bright, but they tend to be a little bit more diluted in saturation than high-end pencils. And what that means is, you know, if you wanted to then go over with colour pencil, you could... Um, depending on see how much you layer them so yeah this is all just my opinion by the way obviously we all have our own thoughts so if you have any responses to any of these questions as well please feel free to put them in the chat as this video is happening um or in the in the comments afterwards i'd love to hear your thoughts so yeah i hope that's kind of answered your question barbara um I know I did say in the comments, um, you know, general things that I thought that I thought it'd be good to break it down a bit more for you. So I'm now getting up some questions. I had quite a few on Instagram, actually. Thank you so much for your responses. Really, really appreciate it. Um, because, yeah, now it makes the video really fun. So um, my lovely colouring friend B, uh, she asked a question, what made you decide to have a YouTube channel? Um, so I started my channel in 2019, right at the beginning. I had wanted to have one for a long time. Um, I always kind of envisioned when I was younger that I would do YouTube of some sort, but I didn't know at that time that it was going to be to do with colouring. And when I probably started colouring and uh, finding Colour Tube in 2017, roughly, I think it must have been before then. No, it must have been before then because mm, maybe it was earlier, 2016. Um, yeah, I just thought that it was really fun. I wanted to interact with everyone because at that time I didn't have Instagram. And I just thought yeah let's let's do it I, I would love to start my own share my coloring meet new people in the wonderful community because i knew that everyone was really kind um, and supportive of each other so yeah that's kind of what made me want to start when i'd seen other people's videos and was really interested in you know sharing my thoughts on certain things and yeah, I just wanted to feel like I was part of the community because obviously you're still part of the community if you don't have social media. Absolutely. But um, I just felt like as, as well, because I didn't know anyone that did adult colouring um, who I knew because I'm, I'm 16, it was great to find all of these people on YouTube. And it was really um people's coloring that i saw that inspired me to start coloring properly you know i saw reviews about the prism colors i saw people using them and that's what made me want to get them so yeah i was i was inspired and decided to start my own channel so i just can't believe that it's evolved um over the past two and a half years it's crazy to me and I'm just so grateful for all of the support and I just love sharing me and sharing my colouring and things that I get up to so yeah I hope that's answered your question B but um, really just the joy of, of colouring as well I don't think this will ever be a hobby that I get tired of I think I'll always 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 continue with it and unless something drastic happens where I suddenly decide I don't want to do it which I can which I very much doubt I will always have this channel um to do I 
don't think I could now envision a time where I'm not colouring and doing YouTube. So I'm in it for the long haul, definitely. Um, Anna, uh, the lovely Anna of Crafts 19, um, asked, what got you into colouring? So uh, quite similar, actually. I think quite a few of these questions were um, were similar. But yeah, basically just seeing people on YouTube, uh, wrong end <laughs> of the pen there, um, seeing people's colouring really did inspire me and I wanted to do what everyone else did. I, I wanted to get the same supplies and do the, um, the pages in the books and so without that initial inspiration from other people, I don't think I would have necessarily found a colour tube. I don't even know. I think, I think I saw videos by Peter Hewitt, uh, Jen from Reading with Pugs initially and just stumbled across them. I honestly can't remember. But I just remember feeling like, yeah, this is for me. Um, and obviously that's kind of what led to my channel but before that it ultimately led to my colouring so you know I was still colouring for almost two years before I started my channel and it just felt like the right time to, to start a channel really because um, I didn't start it right at the beginning of my colouring journey but I felt like I was, um, you know, at, at a good place to to start. And I'm so glad that I did. Because I'm just having the best time. So Mrs M Colour Lady on Instagram asked, how do you decide on a colour palette? Um, favourite slash least favourite colouring supplies as well. So how do I decide on a colour palette? Well, for this page, for example, I'm using an actual colour palette that I've got in my book that's one way I do actually have a couple of videos that I did ages ago this is two years ago now so I don't actually know what I said um, in that video but I believe it's in two parts and I show uh, how I choose a color palette I do like using design seeds which is a website I use inspiration books I use uh, color or pictures for references as well that really helps just a multitude of things. Sometimes the colour palette just comes to me, which obviously is easier said than done. Um, I know that especially if you're at the beginning of your colouring journey, it might not, and that's totally fine. Um, and yeah, sometimes I have to think really hard about what I want to, to do, and then I, I go to a colour palette because I really like using the you know cohesive effects. So it's really a mixture of things, but... Um, I wouldn't really say I use one more than the other. It really depends on what the page is to begin with because sometimes I pick a page purely because I know what I want it to look like in the end. So, yeah, that is a, a tricky, tricky question. But I do have a video as well on reference books that I use. Lots of kind of pictures of flowers and florals and animals and things like that are great for getting inspired so I would definitely recommend looking at design seeds even just you know color palettes on the internet you can find tons on Pinterest and just searching up a I don't know a tropical color palette and then things will come up for you to explore so that's a great start if you're really stuck but if you're not sure just start on one element I mean I tend to go for quite realistic colours so I know this is kind of an exception but this is because it's kind of fantasy but I will definitely do the grass green on this page that's just me um so that's a good place to start if you know you definitely want something to be one colour you know, like the flowers to be purple or, you know, something like that. Just start there and, and see how it goes. Or equally, you could photocopy the page and have a practice. Um, Peter Hewitt's done some great videos. She did a grasshopper colour along and she 
actually did little thumbnails of the page and planned out where the different colours would go and she just saw what she um, preferred. So that's really good as well. Oh, this is very streaky. Um, I don't know if I can get rid of that. Um, as you can see, I'm still not very, very good at markers, but I'm getting better. <laughs> um, so the next couple of questions are from my very good friend Jo, um, 120 underscore colours on Instagram, which is your go-to brand of pencils? Oh, that reminds me, um, the other question, sorry, that um, was from Mrs M, colour lady, was favourite, least favourite colour and supplies. So these two kind of go together. Um, my go-to brand of pencils is such a hard question because I, I tend to just use a mix of pencils. I definitely know my Prismacolor is the best out of every pencil, so in that respect I'd probably go for those. Um, I do use my Holbein's a lot though, and there are some very unique colours in that set, so I'd say on that basis I would go for my Holbein's. And then there are sets now that I'm using more and more, like my Black Widows, that I gravitate towards quite a lot now because I want to learn them a bit better. Um, try them out on different papers so I think purely because I know them the best I'd probably say Prismacolor but that's definitely ever evolving for me um definitely changing and you know I'm always looking to try and use all my pencils on lots of pages but I have been just using one brand on one page quite a lot more recently so in terms of least favourite and favourite supplies, well, colour pencil are my favourite um, colouring supply as a whole. Um, I'd say mm, my least favourite. Um, oh, that's tricky. I used to um, think fine liners were very hard to work with, but now that I use them as a base, I really love them. I'd say... Hmm, Probably, oh, I'm not actually sure, no, I wouldn't say marker because I do use them a lot now, even for other things. Actually, I know what it is. I don't, I don't use water-based markers a lot because they streak for me even more than markers. And I know fine liners are basically really thin versions of water-based markers, but I've tried them for bigger areas and they don't work for me. So yeah, I'd probably say those. Um... And in, in terms of embellishments, I really like using anything. So I'm not really sure I have a least and least favourite. Obviously, I'll always gravitate towards things that are less messy. Um, but I do really love my Kiluro paints. Um, they're a new thing that I, I really love. So that's what I would probably say to um, those, those questions. Um, I am just going to go take a quick break, get some water, um, and I will be back when hopefully it's cooled down a little bit so I've now finished basing all of these flowers obviously it'll be a couple of seconds for you um, or in the next part um, it might be a little while for me but I will be back shortly okay I'm back so what I'm planning on doing now is just going to um, base most of the greenery um, in my green marker not all of it I do want some of the leaves to be a slightly different shade of green so I'm not going to do all of them but most of the tops of the flowers are going to be green um, and probably also I'll base this fairy as well um, yeah just see what, what else I want to do really um, in part one I'm just going to continue answering the questions for now as well so I have another question from Jo uh, which is how do you manage to fit colouring in around study music and being a teenager so I I'm fairly busy during my weeks. Um, as I've mentioned before, I do teach piano and school anyway, you know, going five five days out the week um, means that I can't colour for as long. Really, um, because I have less time, 
I think I'm even more grateful for the time I do have to colour. So, you know, I make sure I do what I need to do and then I colour. I always try to do a little bit at least every day because it really does um, help and it's really important to put that little bit of time aside, even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes or even just looking through some of my books. Um, but yeah, it definitely is difficult um, and I don't get as much completed as other people during a month which is absolutely fine because the time that I do spend I really enjoy and the pictures that I can I complete I really enjoy and I'm even more grateful for the extra time like now with being on holiday that I have um, I know that it's probably going to be even more busy when I go to college um, so yeah uh, pr I probably won't get as many pictures done but I'm still hoping to commit to one video a week at least so that won't stop um, unless you know I'm during exam week and stuff and in that case I will try and pre-film videos but it just yeah it I don't really know how to be honest because I am busy but I think it's always good to make time for it it's really important uh, for me to just have that little bit of time to do my hobby um, so yeah that's kind of it I don't really know how but um, somehow somehow I do um, I've got a question from Sarah Megan five and um, if you could only color pictures from one illustrator who would you choose oh this is really difficult when when some of you are sending in your questions I think oh gosh I really don't know the answers you know straight away to those um, well if you um, don't know, I have completed Ivy and Inky Butterfly by Joanna Basford once before and completing a book from an illustrator really does take a long time. No matter the thickness of the book, but the fact that you're colouring all of those pages by one illustrator, you know, most of the time would mean that you really like the illustrator's work, otherwise, you know, you wouldn't colour it. So, definitely Joanna Basford would be an option. Also Clara Markova because I just love her pages. I never get bored with them because there's always different things to colour. You know, there isn't much repetition, which I really like. Um, but then there are just so many others. Um, it's so many others. That would be really tricky. I think one illustrator would I would probably go for Joanna Basford but there are certain books that I don't think I'd really ever get bored of like the mythographic books just because you know there's so much detail but they're they're all so different all of the pages and there's you know little intricate things that you don't really spot until you actually colour the picture so um yeah I'd probably have to go for Joanna Basford I mean her pages are absolutely gorgeous no doubt about that um and I guess I'm used to her style um and I've coloured lots of hers as well so um love of colouring who's uh, the wonderful Shannon um on Instagram has asked who's your favourite illustrator and what is your overall favourite book you own um so as I've kind of already touched on I mean, I've got lots of illustrators that I really like. Clara Markova, uh, Kirby, Joanna Basford, Rita Berman. Um, the Mythographic Books have been a recent addition to my ever-growing collection. Um, Eri, Maria Choll, Hannah Carlson, so many. Um, you know, I probably have to go for either Clara Markova or Joanna Basford. Um, but my overall favourite book I think purely because I've finished Ivy and the Inky Butterfly that would definitely be a contender um, you may be noticing by now that I'm rubbish at just you know one answer questions so it's very difficult for me to just pick one um, but yeah Ivy and the Inky Butterfly would definitely be a contender Probably I Believe in Fairies by Clara Markova because, or Fairy Celebrations because I've coloured the most in those books. Usually the books that I colour more in 
are the books that I like more. Um, so that's kind of an indication uh, as to how much I, I like them, I guess. Um, what else? Ooh. I'm not sure. There's so many gorgeous ones. Um, but yeah, they're, they're definite contenders. Um, Lovey Ali, um, Enchanted Colours, asks, what is your favourite page you have coloured so far? Um, oh, this is such a tough question for me. Uh, I did a video quite a while ago of my top ten pages I've coloured, and actually I think that's probably changed a little bit um, since I did it. One of my favourites is definitely... Um, my toadstool page from Ivy and Leaky Butterfly, that's why it's my um, symbol for YouTube, my icon. Um, I also really like the first page I ever coloured in Ivy and Leaky Butterfly, which is Ivy and House Mouse on the Boat. Um, my double spread that I did in Fairy Celebrations. I tend to go for pages where I've coloured things realistically, I really like um, things like that. But oh, it's really hard to just try and pinpoint one specific page um yeah i'm really sorry i can't answer these um very well um it is very tricky to try and just think of one um if i think of one that comes to mind i'll i'll put it in the the video but i'm not sure um if i will be able to just swatching these blues because I want to figure out which one I'm going to use for my other flowers. Yeah, I think I'll go for the lighter one. Um, so they are the, the first couple of questions. Let me just get the other ones up for you. So I did get quite a few on Instagram actually. Thank you so much everyone. Um, it really means a lot. So let's have a look okay so i've got one from eve coloring what is your all-time favorite pencil brand so kind of touching on what um i've already been talking about um or oh, i definitely gravitate towards prisma colors because i know them more as i've said but in terms of the the quality and the um the way they Form, I'd probably say my whole binds, but it is kind of an unfair statement for me to say that because they are really expensive, so obviously, you'd expect them to be better. But I do love my whole binds, I really, really do. They're, they're amazing, so I'd probably go for whole binds. Um, and Potato Princess Twitch, who is the lovely Cassie, um, has asked. Um, how did you get into adult colouring slash start collecting adult colouring books? So, kind of on the same wavelength as what I was already saying, I should have sifted through these actually and said who had, all the people who had asked similar things. But um, basically, as I mentioned, it was really seeing other people colour. And yeah, being inspired by that and just stumbling across colouring in general, I think. If I had them, I would have mainly just been colouring as a kid um, and not really transfer into the adult colouring phase. So I'm really pleased that I knew and found out about adult colouring. Because even though I'm not an adult myself, I still love partaking in it because it's something entirely different to just colouring as a kid. 100%. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much how um and then my lovely cousin Rosie we were staying with them whilst um I was putting these posts up on Instagram on my story she commented uh or asked how am I so good which is really sweet of her um I, I think I've definitely seen some videos before where I think it was Jen uh, from Reading with Pugs was talking about how there's talent and then there's working um, at something to become good at it. Um, 
I definitely don't think that I would have improved if it wasn't for the influence of YouTube and being able to watch how people colour um, and be able to get better that way purely because I wouldn't have really known where to start if it hadn't been for that. Um, so it was a major factor for me being able to watch how something was done. Just it was amazing um, seeing how to blend, uh, seeing what different brands and things were out there and how they worked and stuff like that. So um, I definitely didn't just suddenly work out how to do different techniques. I mean, I'm always learning all the time. When I watch tutorials, um, they help so much because you, you're learning new techniques and blends and colours you wouldn't... I mean, there are colours that I don't normally use that I then start using um, more. So that is very sweet of you, Rosie, but really we're improving all the time so my level of good now will be hopefully different in years to come and I will have learnt new things and you know we are always improving this is what is so great about this hobby you can never stop learning it's just it's fantastic I absolutely love it so um yeah basically I'm just ever improving and you know when I started colouring in Millie Morton's Animal Kingdom I was just using Stabilo felt tip pens I never thought I would blend with pencil and um, you know try out that sort of thing so it was very different for me but something that I really enjoyed okay so um, I have all of these um, screenshots that I've sent myself on my computer so I can um, put them on here so um tea crafty little things um on instagram has asked what's your favorite color pencil set favorite marker set and favorite embellishment so i've touched on what my favorite color pencil set is um my favorite marker set well i have a few um copics like a very minimal few i got two sets of six at tk max for a ridiculously cheap price um each set was the same, well gosh, how much were they? Maybe like six or seven pounds? No, it must have been a little bit more than that. Nine, I think they were about nine pounds, but that is really, really cheap for Copics. You could pay five pounds just for one, um, so I couldn't pass those up. So I've got a few of those and I have to say they are just amazing. The only other markers I have are classed as alcohol markers are these touch cool ones, which, as I've said, are all right. They're not my favourite. Um, there are pros and cons to every set. These don't have a brush tip. Others do, but I didn't want to spend a crazy amount of money for markers when I don't use them that much. Um, but in terms of water-based markers, I don't really have many. I really like fine liners. Um, as I said, they're very similar to water-based markers. So yeah, that's what I'd probably say. Um, a favourite embellishment. I love my glitter gel pens. Um, I love the unusual Jelly Roll gel pens, like the glaze pens, the metallics, the Uniball Signos. Um, the Arteza white gel pen. I love a good white gel pen. Um, anything metallic and shimmery, um, definitely. I don't use, um, I use glitter gel pens a lot, but not always the brighter colours. If I use the glitter gel pens, it's mainly to put dots and things, um, on things to make them look, um, pretty. So, yeah, I would definitely go for glitter gel pens though. Love them. Anything glittery, shimmery. Love my clear paints as well. Um, and they also asked best tip slash advice for, for a beginner to mid-level colourist. So, I can't remember now. I feel like I've done a video. In fact, I know I, ha I, know I have. Um, the 10 tips I wish I'd known as a beginner colourist. If I remember, I'll try and 
link these in the description. I don't even know if you can put them in the the card thing at the top of the videos now. Um, but basically, I did a video on 10 tips I wish I'd known as a beginner, just my opinions. And the best tip I'd say is don't get a load of stuff to begin with because one, it can be overwhelming. And two, if you find that you don't like it, then, you know, there's no point spending all that money. So I'd say get a couple of different books that are very different. If you know you're someone that likes patterns, maybe get a mandala book and then something very different like a Joanna Basford book or something with um, scenes. Give it a try. Um, watch videos from other people. That just is honestly one of the best things you can do. Just learn from other people. See what they do. I'm just bringing in some fine liners here um, because that's what really helped me and that's really the best advice I can give because that's what I did um, just watching what other people do and you know their their techniques and and stuff like that and finding pictures that you love on um, social media that other people have coloured you know because it, it gives you inspiration um, so I'd say yeah Definitely just learn from other people because that's what I did and otherwise I think it's very difficult to know where to start. Um, follow colour alongs. I've I've learned so much from Chris Chang's videos especially. Um, and I would say as well, I'm someone that likes to have lots of whips on the go because I like colouring different styles all at once. So if you also don't mind that, have a couple of whips with very different pictures. So maybe something that's very detailed and something less detailed. Because if you get bored of doing one thing, you could always go to another. And if you're not feeling a page, don't carry on with it. Just start something entirely new. I do that all the time. And then I'll eventually come back to the page. But um, yeah, don't feel that you have to stick to one thing. Because otherwise, you might not be as happy with the outcome. So don't feel that you, you have to do that. Um, I hope that's kind of answered that question. I, I never really know, you know, if what I'm saying is actually helpful. Um, I kind of just give my advice, what I um, know has helped me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my answer to that question. I'm going to grab a few more colours um, and I will be back with you. Okay, so I've picked out a few more colours. I've gone for some beigey brown tones because I need them to base the other parts of the page, like the ladders um, and doors and things like that. Just put them down um, on the page so I know what they look like. And I've also picked uh, a green Arteza Inconic Fine Liner because I know I want to use that for the other green parts. This is quite a lime green at the moment and I want something a little bit um, lighter and um, yeah, a bit of a different tone. So that's kind of what I've gone for. And I'm going to continue with the questions. So another of my lovely colouring friends, um, Easter, she's asked, when you travel, how do you know ahead of time all the colours and embellishments? So I have done a, a few videos about what I take with me um, on holiday, but actually what I know what to take is a different matter it depends how long I'm going away for if we're going away for a couple of weeks then it's a bit more tricky if we're only going away for a couple of days I generally just take a whip that I'm working on at that time that I know will be easy to continue with so sometimes I don't get around to colouring which is absolutely fine but for example um, I have actually just finished my mythographic imagine page that I was working on but that would have been a fantastic page to take with me if I was going away because one of the big um, parts of the page were the leaves on her dress. And I was using the same colour uh, colours um, and only a few colours. So if I knew I was only going away for one night, that would have that would be a great one. So I'd say I always choose something with minimal colours and minimal parts to it where I don't have to take as many pencils. Sometimes I take the embellishments with me and sometimes I don't. So sometimes I know in my head exactly what embellishments I want to use. And then that's great. I, I take them with me. 
but generally I won't take embellishments or too many with me because usually it's unlikely that I'll even finish a page around where away. So I kind of think, well, if I know I'm not going to finish it, there's no point in me taking embellishments. So I tend to leave it. Um, but it is, it is a tricky one because it all depends what I'm working on at that time. Um, and usually I try to take a range of different things. So I'll usually take one um, case to put my colour pencils in. Um, and then I'll take different brands um, to put in in the case. So, yeah, it, it, it does depend on the time for me. Um, and sometimes it is very tricky. I'll kind of mull it over for a couple of days and think, well, what could I wait to colour until we're away? And what would be easiest to colour whilst we're away? Um, you know, that won't require too much yeah in the way of supplies and it also depends on the actual book size i love the clara markova postcards because they're small compact they're, they're brilliant um hardback books are great as well to take away um the square books are a little bit harder because of the the size of them i do really love them and i am planning on taking a couple whilst we go to devon so it's all about what's convenient at the time for me, I think. Um, so I hope that's answered your question, Easter. Sorry if I, um, yeah, didn't fully. Um, the lovely Corey, colourfully optimistic, has asked, how do you start a colouring page such as picking your colours or the vision of the page? So um, again, kind of as I touched on, sometimes the colours just come to me, which I know isn't very helpful because that doesn't explain how. Um, but sometimes I only know what I want one thing to be. So even with starting this page, I kind of knew I wanted it to be really fantasy-like. And I wanted to use pastel colours, that sort of thing. So I then went in, um, in this colour palette book. And there's a really good index at the back. So you can do it by word. So I searched up fairy in like the fantasy elements and there was, there was nymph and something else as well and it just happened to be that a colour palette that I really liked came under that name so that was really helpful um, so yeah sometimes I do go searching for colour palettes and sometimes it comes to me but even as I said just starting with one element can then help you with the rest of the page uh, and once one thing's done it can become clearer what you want to do i also think sometimes starting with the background is sometimes easiest because it makes everything jump out um, and it's a lot easier to then see what all of the elements are that works better i think for a detailed page in this case it didn't really matter because this page isn't too detailed um but yeah uh it, it's a it's a very very tough thing to do especially if you are beginning and you just feel overwhelmed with with starting a page so yeah I'd say just the reason I pick a page in the first place is because something jumps out at me that I really like so this one was mainly just the floral element and the fantasy element to it that I loved so the whole purpose of picking a page for me is that I, I flick through the book pick a page that I love and then I'm set on it I'll never really pick a page that I'm not feeling because then I then it's harder for me to start the the process of doing the page if that makes sense. So yeah, um, it is definitely a learning curve, and sometimes it's not immediately there when when I start a page. But as I go along, it it helps um, and improves. Um, Melissa. Uh, D2214 on Instagram asks, where do you get your inspiration for your colouring pages? They are also beautifully done. Oh, that's so sweet of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I, as I said, I use inspiration books, anything really that I think, oh, that's gorgeous. Even if I see flowers out and about, I take a picture of them. Um, even the other time uh, I was colouring a unicorn 
picture from the I Believe in Fairies colouring postcards, I just searched up magical background because I knew I wanted a magical background and I found one. So the internet's great. Obviously, we're very fortunate that we can use that as a source for inspiration. But uh, I have lots of lovely of nature books. There's a lovely poetry book I have by Nicola Davies, um, which have lovely illustrations in them. Flower fairies books as well. Anything that I think will be helpful for um, my colouring. So, you know, it's a multitude of things as well as my colour palettes. Um, Colour palettes are kind of the starting point for me. I use reference images a lot of the time though, especially when, you know, um, I want to colour a beta or something like that. I'm always searching up pictures um, for flowers and animals. And that's a good way as well of knowing where to start. If you, if you have an element like that that you know is going to take quite a while, um, and get inspiration by yeah searching up that particular thing um yes i hope that helps um charlie um on instagram he is uh my cousin's um cousin so um hi charlie if you're watching um he asked i was open to questions that weren't just coloring related as well so um he asked what subjects are you doing for gcses and which ones do you enjoy the most so i have um just finished my gcses and so i'm moving on to a levels in september and for my gcses well if you're not in the uk i'll explain to you how our system works so at our school we had some GCSEs that were compulsory and then some that we could pick. So our compulsory ones were maths, English language, English literature. So language is the, the um, oh, what's it called, like the comprehension side of um, English. And then the literature is the analysis of text, things like that. And then we had science. We could either do double or triple. I did double. And then... RE was uh, another compulsory one that we had so I, it then left me with three options and I picked music, um, art and history so they were my three extras. Music was definitely my favourite out of all of them um, and for A-levels I'm carrying on with music, English literature and maths so I haven't actually decided to do a brand new subject like psychology or criminology or anything like that I've stuck to subjects that I enjoyed at GCSE and that I would like to carry on with um in the future also because I don't know what I want to do yet um I wanted to make sure that my options were open and I'm really pleased with the selection that I have because music and maths go well together because music um is very mathsy um, and similarly I'm gonna to have to write lots of essays in music for the theory part of it so that will go along well with my English and even though maths and English are polar opposites that all three of them together link really well so I'm really pleased with what I've chosen um, and the lovely mini Rachie and uh, Rachel on Instagram has asked since you do art and have an Etsy do you ever think about creating your own book um, so I did do art for GCSE, but I, I love still life drawing. I'm all right at drawing if I have a reference in front of me, trying to come up with something in my head. I just don't know how, how I could do that. I've tried before and it's, it's failed. Um, the only drawing that's come close is when I've done Joanna Basford's house drawing key wonderlands drawings but that's copying her I, I don't have a unique drawing style um but as sorry if you can hear the traffic but as some of you very kindly say you when you look at my coloring you feel that i have a unique coloring style so for me that's the that's the compromise i may you know enjoy coloring have a unique style for that but i definitely don't for drawing i can't just magic up stuff in my head and try to um to draw it so I don't think I'd ever do 
a yeah a coloring book but um maybe at some point in the future i don't know i could write a book of some sort i definitely couldn't write a fiction book or something like that i don't think i'd have the the patience i just find it amazing you know people can write these huge novels um but i'm i'm thinking um Rachel, you probably were talking about a colouring book. So, yeah, probably not, but never say never. Um, but it may be that I write a book, kind of, I don't know, an autobiographical, is that right? Yeah, um, style. I don't know about different things that I've done, because over the years I've done many different things. I as a child I never really stuck to one thing this has been the first hobby that I've really truly stuck at so um yeah we'll have to see but it's definitely been amazing doing my Etsy because it's something so different but it still ties in well with the whole you know stationery I love it I I love doing it um and I really appreciate the support that I've gotten from doing that because it has given me hope and I've loved kind of doing the entrepreneurial side of things that I've always wanted to venture into so yeah that I hope that's answered your question I think we have one more lot of questions what I might have to do is um ask for questions for part two if not I'll just do a normal colour and track so think that would be fun as well um but yeah obviously you won't be able to comment questions on this video because I will have already filmed part two by the time you see this um but yeah I have a, a few more questions having said that though I do have quite a few more so I might actually save them for part two because I've only got little bits left to do on this now and I don't think I'd necessarily have time to answer all the questions so I'm just going to finish up this um, pebble sort of section so what I'm hopefully planning on doing in part two is doing the pencil bases and things like that um, I've pretty much based everything now so yeah I think that's what I'll do I may do a few things in advance and then see where I'm at but I think that's the beauty of doing a video actually um there's no way I would have got this much done in a live stream but at the same time um it's a shame that I won't be able to interact with all of you live well I will be able to because of the commenting um but live streams are a whole different experience I just love doing them so um yeah I really do just want to thank Michelle again actually for being able to allow me to do a premiered video um instead and I'm really excited for her and Ashley uh this event it's going to be amazing so this part is going up on the 30th of July I believe um and then it's running for the 31st and the 1st of August as well. Um, so yeah, this is part one. I think I'll leave it there. Um, I've been chatting for a while now, obviously with different clips, but um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to those of you who have um, put questions forward for me to answer. I mean, obviously I didn't answer all of them very well. Um, I, apologies for that. But um, I've had such fun doing this video and um, I have recently just done a colour and chat, but it's lovely to do colour and chats again because I've really missed doing them. Um, so yeah, that's all from me for part one. Thank you if you've stuck with me um, in the live chat. I really appreciate it and I I will um, hopefully be here um, for the um, for the live chat. And I will put up here now for you... Um, who is on next I don't know at this um this current time but I will put it up on the screen for you um and yeah please go over and I hope you enjoy watching all the rest of the streams and until part two I will um say bye and see you then take care everyone bye <laughs>